I know pops. Welcome to Wyoming. And if you've heard of that state, you might know this thing. That's Old Faithful. But we're going way before it was around. We're in the late Cretaceous. This was long before any grandparents were around. Or any great-grandparents. Or even any great-great-great-great-great-great-great-great-great-great-great-great-great-great-great-great-great-great-great-great-great-great-great-great-great-great-great-great-great-great-great-great-great-great-great-great-great-great-great-great-great-great-great-great-great-great-great-great-great-great-
That's a lot of rubber toys. But of course, back then, there was no such thing as rubber toys. Or toys of any kind. There you are! This fantastic creature is a dromaeosaur, better known today as a raptor. And this particular raptor was discovered in Utah. So they decided to name it the... Florida Raptor! Right, I mean, let me let me check my notes. Uh, I mean the Toronto Raptor. I kid, I kid. Behold the great Utah Raptor. Now this wasn't just any raptor. The Utah Raptor was one of the biggest raptors to ever walk the earth. They were 25 feet long, head to tail, and they weighed a lot. I'm talking over a thousand pounds. Not many animals today weigh that much. A polar bear does, though. I say, even though that polar bear floaty was only filled with air, our friend here didn't know that. It looked about the same size as this giant lizard. And yet our dino didn't have one ounce of fear. That's because becoming someone else's dinner was never a problem this raptor had in life. Being such a huge dinosaur made them an apex predator. That means they were at the very top of the dinosaur pecking order. But their huge size did pose one teensy problem. They were quite slow compared to smaller dinosaurs. So what's a hungry Utah raptor to do if it can't outrun its prey? Everybody, shh, be very quiet. They hide and wait until they can sneak attack. Much like how cats and snakes hunt today. Their dinner won't even see them coming. How fantastically brilliant. Shh. Rather than relying on speed, they used their brains to hunt for food. And it was a pretty big brain compared to other dinosaurs. We don't want to give your very clever hiding spot away. While we wait for prey to arrive, let's take a closer look at what might come next. Quite right, old pal. Who needs a fork and knife to eat when Utah raptors had those tools built in? That huge sickled claw, uh, sickled means curved, was a foot long. Oh, <laughs> and a, a foot long claw on a foot. <laughs> That surely came in handy when eating their meals, but that's not all. Not only did they have a big, strong jaw, but would you look at those sharp, serrated teeth? Serrated means they have little, jagged edges that work like mini saws. Precisely! Utah Raptor's teeth work sort of like the saws that we use to cut through wood. Let's get a good look at that saw's serrated edges. Oh, looks mighty sharp indeed. Between our raptor's sharp claws and serrated teeth, they can eat just about anything using their awesome sneak attack. Oh, uh-oh. That floaty's not supposed to be here again. And definitely not in that quicksand. Utah raptor, old buddy, old pal. You do not want to go there. Trust me. Friend, that is not solid ground. In fact, it's liquefied ground. It's quicksand. Loose watery sand that will make heavy things just, well, sink. I tried to warn you, and it's very hard to get out of. Easy does it. That's it. Woo. An epic close call. Some of your other raptor friends weren't so lucky. They didn't make it out of the quicksand back in the early Cretaceous. But 100 million years later, in modern day, that quicksand hardened into a huge 18,000 pound mega block of sandstone. Paleontologists have found many perfectly preserved Utah raptors inside that mega block. Animal bones and feathers preserved in rock for a very long time are called fossils. And this is a fossil gold mine. Good thing you were quicker than the quicksand. Welcome to Alberta, Canada, famous for its c -c cold winters. <laughs> Maybe I'll warm up with a nice cup of hot cocoa. More like a cocoa popsicle. It's much colder today than it was back in the late Cretaceous period, which was 75 million years ago. <laughs> Anywhere. It came from something really fun. One of the loudest dinosaurs that ever lived. The Parasaurolophus! <laughs> wow, I can never shout that loud. But then again, I don't have a crest on my head to 
to help me out. <laughs> what a crest! No wonder the name Parasaurolophus means near-crested dinosaur. Speaking of near, don't be shy, fella. Come a little closer and let us hear that horn rip. Woo! I think I'll call you Max, as in maximum loudness. How did Max get so loud? Parasaurolophus crests were hollow inside, which made their calls much louder. Kind of like the hollow body of an acoustic guitar. This looks like a regular guitar, but instead of a hollow body, it has a solid block of wood instead. Listen to how quiet it sounds. See? <laughs> Not very loud. Now listen what happens when we replace it with a regular guitar that has a hollow body. Much louder. Yahoo! <laughs> now that crest wasn't just a cool way to make sound. It also looked great, too. Max probably used his crest to show off and impress other dinosaurs, too. And maybe even... Whoa! <gasps> Ducks? Oh, that so reminds me. Max over here was called a duck-billed dinosaur. Wait a second. Oh, I see the resemblance. His snout is a similar shape to a duck's. It's flat and wide like a duck's bill or beak is. And you want to know something cool about what he puts in that snout of his? Max had strong back teeth that helped grind up tougher vegetation for him to eat. Oh no, this new area doesn't have much in the way of ground plants for Max to eat. Good thing he can transform from a four-legged dino to a two-legged dino. Wow. Let's transform into two-leg mode. Oh, I'm so impressed that Max is comfortable walking around on either all fours or just his back two legs. One, two, three, and four leg bone. <laughs> two leg bone. Again, again. Four leg bone. <laughs> two leg bone. You're so much fun. He can reach plants as high as 13 feet off the ground. That's about as tall as a traffic light. <laughs> Good call, Max. Something tells me that traffic lights don't taste very good. And since cars didn't exist, they definitely didn't exist in the Cretaceous period. That's the sound of another Parasaurolophus warning of danger nearby. Run, Max! It's getting closer, Max. Time to go to maximum speed. See how fast he can run on two legs? Faster than a bowling ball rolling down a bowling lane. It wasn't danger at all, Max. Just a bowling ball. <laughs> and there he goes. Back on all fours. Two legs are faster for running and taller for eating. But Parasaurolophus spent most of their time on all fours because it was more comfortable and easier for them to balance. Oh, look, Max. Your friends. Parasaurolophus were herd animals, which means they love to hang out with their friends. They would look for food together, eat together, take naps together. All sorts of things. <laughs> they could tell each other apart from their different sized crests and the different sounds they make. This gives me an idea. Maybe we could have a music session with those cool crest horns. <laughs> now we're grooving. Max, how about a Parasaurolophus solo? Our band needs a little more practice before we're ready for our first performance. <laughs> right, Max? Dino Pops! This is modern day Egypt, and those are the pyramids and the Sphinx. And while they are impressive, they're nowhere near as impressive as a real deal dinosaur. To see one of those, we have to go back 99 million years ago. Welcome to the late Cretaceous period. And boy, is it humid. I know the perfect way to cool down by diving into that swamp. Wow, look at all of this. The gentle waving of prehistoric water plants, the shimmer of the sun from above, the oh, massive shadow looming. Oh, but that's who we're here to see. I spy with my little eye a Spinosaurus. Hello, Spinosaurus Aegypticus. So excited to see you. I'm your number one fan. 
Spinosaurus being spying lizard. See the huge, long spines on his back connected by skin? We call this incredible body part a sail. And just look at the size of it. Sail along, little sailboat. You're out of your league here. At six and a half feet tall, the Spinosaurus' sail was twice as big as the fin on the back of a great white shark. The rest of it was hugely big, too. In fact, some scientists think it was the largest meat-eating dinosaur ever. Bigger than the Tyrannosaurus Rex. This bigger-than-big dinosaur skull alone was six feet long, and its body was 50 feet long, and it could have weighed as much as 20 tons. Whoa! That's larger and heavier than a school bus. Oh, no, what's that doing down there? The Spinosaurus was very much like today's crocodiles, if they were mega-sized. Like a croc, it glided just beneath the water's surface. It was under where the water was. Oh, that's so silly, Spinosaurus. I didn't mean that kind of underwear. The Spinosaurus also had a long, pointed snout like a crocodile and conical teeth. That means shaped like a cone. Yes, like an ice cream cone. Mm. But a mouth like that just screams, I like to eat fish. And oh, there's some fish right up ahead. Catch them by surprise. Jump, 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 jump. Oh, um, don't mind me. Carry on. Fish were perfect for our hungry friend, as it was the first dinosaur that was able to swim. And what a swimmer it was! <laughs> Paleontologists, who are scientists that know an awful lot about dinosaurs, think that the Spinosaurus's sail helped it swim because its extra weight kept it underwater. That is, until it came on land. Yes, you heard that right. This amazing dinosaur could be in water and on land. Double threat. And on land, it would walk on two feet. Such talent. We call this being semi-aquatic, meaning it spent time both in and out of the water. Always nice to turn after a dip. Uh, I suppose this already is a tiny umbrella for our amazing dino. With a size like that, the Spinosaurus was quite the predator. You know, a meat eater. But what if someone tried to make our fearsome friend here prey? Something for them to eat. I can tell you that with its size, it likely wasn't prey to many other creatures. It's likely that the Spinosaurus used its fantastic sail to scare off anything, because the sail made it look twice as big. Ah, I didn't say scare me. A showy sail like that could gain the attention of another Spinosaurus looking for a partner? Guess not. However, the sail may not have been used just to attract a partner. It may have just stored water and fat. May also have helped regulate body temperature, meaning it could help this marvelous creature here warm up or cool down. Which is handy on a humid day like this. Going so soon? As your number one fan, I can't wait until the next time Spinosaurus Egypticus sail away another day. Thank you.